Good morning, Walker Chapel and friends of the chapel. We welcome you to this fourth Sunday of Advent 2020. We are excited about this time of celebration and worship together. We are especially glad that you are with us from wherever you are tuning in. Welcome. We hope you'll let us know by placing your name in the chat so that we can imagine your face as we are together in the name of God's Spirit this morning. We're excited about the Christmas preparations that we have been preparing for and want to give you a couple notes about these preparations. You'll have the opportunity, if you live in the Arlington area, to receive a Christmas preparation box this week. You can either pick it up at the parsonage and we'll be socially distanced. We'll have everything organized on tables with your name on it, on the carport. Um, so that you can be prepared for um, our worship on Christmas Eve. So here's what you can look forward to. There'll be some luminary supplies for you and your neighbors, and we hope that you are reaching out to your neighbors to ask them if they'd like to light some luminaries on Christmas Eve. You'll also um, be given some communion supplies. Um, we have some wonderful little tiny, tiny chalice cups that these are new to me, but they have the grape juice in the top and then a tiny little wafer in the bottom. And so if you'll tell us how many of these that you'd like to have for our Christmas Eve Zoom service, we'll make sure that those are placed in your Christmas box as well. The Zoom information for Christmas Eve at 530 will be in the chapel note, likely in the chat this morning. But if you have any trouble, give us a call and let us help walk you through how to get on the Zoom call. 5.30 is the time that we plan to gather on Christmas Eve. And then afterwards, we'll go out into our respective um, outside, or if we live in apartments, we'll go right to a window and we'll prepare our luminaries. And um, then at eight o'clock, wherever you are, in whatever state you're in, um, walk out onto in the outdoors and we're gonna be singing Silent Night together. We're gonna be joining our brothers and sisters at Mount Olivet, as well as our brothers and sisters at Callaway United Methodist, as well as lots and lots of folks around our nation and around our world who will be singing um, the favorite, favorite um, Christmas song, Silent Night. So again, um, look forward to these Christmas boxes and if you can't pick yours up at the parsonage, we will deliver them right to you. So help us by letting us know how many you need because we're looking forward to this time together. I want to let you know that especially during this strange and challenging time, this different season of Advent that I've been praying more fiercely than ever before for each of you. I know that for many of you, um, this has been a particularly hard season. There are many of you whose hearts are heavy. You have lost this year. You have undergone major challenges and some of you are trusting the process as your bodies are healing from significant challenges this year. And I want you to know from our house to your house that you are in our thoughts, in our heart, in our prayers. So please know that and receive that as one of God's mightiest gifts. I want to invite all of us also this morning to offer special prayers to the Olson Timmons family. We've been talking about them as one of our families that has been stricken by the virus and they continue to quarantine. But I do want to let you know, if you have not received this information already, that uh, Jay Timmons' dad, Warner, succumbed to the virus this past week and Jay continues um, to get well. We are trusting from the virus, but we want to offer our special, special prayers, especially to Warner's beloved um, wife, Mickey. We love you and we are, we are sending our, our deepest prayers for all of you, for Rick, 
for Jay, for Catherine, for Ellie and Jacob. We are with you in spirit. So many of prayers surrounding you and all those you love during this time. So as we prepare for this time of worship, I invite you to open, open your hearts to receive the gift of Christmas. Welcome, good morning, we're the Hatchers. We gather with friends and family for worship, some who live in our neighborhood and some who we long to see because they're far away. We're all part of the family of God and are close together this morning as we worship. Today we continue a season of preparation. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, a time for waiting for Christmas. God has brought us together and we're glad you are here. On behalf of the congregation of the Walker Chapel United Methodist Church, we welcome you to worship today. Hear the call to worship from Romans chapter 13. You know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake up from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Come, let us worship God. Let us pray. In anticipation we gather, in expectation we wait. We gather to watch for the coming of the good news into our world and into our lives. We wait to see the fullness of God's vision. O oh God, open the doors to our hearts that this year we may have room for the birth of Jesus. O oh God, as we marvel over the things you are doing, overwhelm us with so much wonder that words of praise spring from our lips. In this time of waiting, let true worship begin in our hearts. Let our praises rise up to the heavens. Let our celebrations spread new hope over a tired world. Let us gather together all our dreams and lives and present them to the child of Bethlehem. Amen. Amen. Today begins the fourth Sunday of Advent. It is less than a week until Christmas. We have been preparing for weeks now. We have been focused on the metaphor of getting our house as ready as sort of a parable to understand some ways in which our hearts are prepared for the coming of Christ. We have acknowledged the need to get ready. We have slowed down and cleaned up. We have engaged in anticipation and excitement as we wait. And this week, we wait on the threshold as we live and move in between what is human and what is divine. We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often, we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give is, and, lo and live is the sign of eternity. God with us right now, and we forget the company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, The Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God is with us. We light these four candles with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, to lean into that presence, God is as close as our own breath. This in a confused and confusing world is a peace that passes all understanding. It is the peace that knows that company is coming. O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Good morning, children. Uh, as always, I've been looking forward to this time with you, and I've been thinking and holding each of you in my heart this week. So each of you that are tuned in this morning, welcome and know that I am so very proud of you, that I love you dearly, and that I'm excited with you this morning as we are preparing for Christmas. I also know that especially Catherine and Ellie and Jacob's hearts are sad this morning and I've been thinking especially about you. I was remembering this morning that I was in the fourth grade when I lost my first grandparent and I remember very well what that felt like my children lost their first grandparent when our girls were in the fourth grade. So here's what I've been thinking about when we think about the season of Christmas and we think about the story of light. The wonderful thing about God's light is that the light is carried inside of us. And so wherever we go, all through the day and all through the night, the light is with us. When we're feeling joyful and excited, the light is with us. When we're feeling heavy and sad, the light is with us. In every part of life, God's light is with us. And when we celebrate Christmas, it is the light that we are remembering. And so even when we lose someone that we so dearly love, that person's light continues to shine inside of us. And that's the message of Christmas, that Jesus' light shines inside of us and all those, yes, even my grandmother from 1970, her light still shines in me. And so that's one of the reasons why we talk about light at Christmas time. It's one of the reasons that we are this year celebrating by placing out luminaries. Now, let me tell you something about a luminary because you don't normally think about a luminary as a person, but a luminary can be a person who seeks to or looks to influence something else. So in this case, to shine light. So here's what we want to talk about when we're thinking about luminaries this week. And I hope that you will be helpful in your own neighborhood at thinking of who you can invite to participate in the Walker Chapel luminary event wherever you are. Um, we've actually already shipped some of these bags and candles to the state of South Carolina. So our lights are going to be shining brightly in lots of different places. So here's what you can look forward to, children, in your Christmas box. There are some white bags that you'll want to just take your hand in and stretch it out. and It'll make a little bit of noise, but you'll st stretch it out. And then in your Christmas box, you'll also have a little baggie of sand. Sand that our students um, have lovingly measured out for us and put in our Christmas boxes. So what you'll do is, you really don't even need any adults to help you with this part, is that you'll put your sand in your box, in your bag, and then you'll shake it around a little bit so that it's just as even as you can get it, right? And then you have a little candle. If you live in an apartment, by chance, you'll have a little battery-powered candle. But for those that are going out in the yard so that other people can see the light, all you'll need to do is place your candle. Well, let's see, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and see how this works. Um, You'll put your candle, you'll light it. You will definitely need help with this part. And then you'll place it down in your bag. And when it's nighttime, you'll be able to see how brightly it's shining. And you have to be really careful because this is real light. This is real fire. It's hard to see in this light that the candle is burning inside of this luminary bag. But this is the challenge. Can you see it a little bit? Yeah. Um, 
and so at nighttime it's going to be really beautiful so you'll be lighting a number of those we're going to blow it out right now so look forward to being a carrier of the luminaries for Christmas Eve. We'll put these out about dusk and then we'll light them and we'll enjoy them all during Christmas Eve. And that will be a wonderful, wonderful community time for us in our neighborhoods as well as our community of faith. You'll also have in your Christmas box one of these candles you may remember from Christmas Eve when we're at the chapel. And when we're together, and we'll do this on Christmas Eve, even on Zoom, we'll be lighting our candles and we'll be singing together and remembering that the message of Christmas is the message of light. Light that came to us in the form of a baby whose name is Jesus and is alive and well in the world and in our hearts. This is the message of light. My dear beloved children, I love you dearly, and my prayer is that this Christmas will be a Christmas indeed, special and to be remembered. I love you. Amen. We are in for such a treat this morning. And my heart is full with thanksgiving for all the men and the women and the boys and girls that have made this morning's message possible. I cannot begin to, to imagine how many hours have gone into um, the creation of what is before us. I hope that you are looking forward to it with as much anticipation as I am. We have um, offerings, gifts, from our choir, from our handbells, from many of you in lots of different places, states, ages. Um, you've offered your humor. You've offered your heartfelt memories and reflections. You've offered your best acting work. Your voices are beautiful. And I just can't tell you how excited I am that you said yes to this God opportunity in this strange and challenging time. One of our primary themes for this morning's Christmas message together is that nothing is impossible with God. And so I hope you will reflect deeply upon that as we continue during this strange and challenging time, as we continue to think about what it's going to take to continue to make it through this strange and challenging time. But for now, what I hope you will do is get comfortable and get prepared to receive this message of Christmas, to receive the gift of each one of these beloved children of God who have poured their hearts in this message into this morning so that we might together be one in Christ Jesus as we celebrate Christmas 2020.
for the Walker Chapel Christmas pageant. Um, my favorite part about getting ready for the pageant is looking through the costumes from years past and reflecting about all of the different uh, pageants that we've had. Um, I found this one when I was in the storage closet. Star, star, star. I think this was Courtney's first pageant. I saw her, uh, looked like she was about five when she had this thing on. So I can almost sing the song um, still to this day. Such a cute <laughs> um, Do you remember these? Yes. We <laughs> still have our copies. <laughs> we would sit around and, and uh, drive around to all of the Girl Scout activities or whatever with the CDs playing in the car so they could remember the songs and, and memorize the songs. I don't think my CD player, my car even has a CD player anymore, so <laughs> I couldn't actually listen to this today, but um, that was a lot of fun. Now, no. we, we the started... The started early. I mean, we would, we would be racing from soccer practice and changing cleats in the car to get there. So they put a lot of work into this. I think they started in October. In That's October. Really awesome. for this October. Oh, well... So you all both had children into pageants far before we did. So, Liesl, do you have any favorite memories of, of pageants past? I have a few. Um, Wendy was about two when she saw her first pageant, and she really wanted to be in it. So by the time she was three, they let her be an angel. And um, she did not know how to read, so she memorized the whole play, and so, so she could figure out where her cue was. <laughs> But she had another memory which was pretty funny and I think it was for the play Angels Aware where the angels were sitting around and talking about what they thought the uh, King of Kings Jesus was going to be like. And um, I remember it was pretty funny because they had um, him up and down as, as Arnold Schwarzenegger and they thought he'd be a strong man. And then they thought, oh no, he's going to be a billionaire. He's going to be the richest man on earth. And Donald Trump came out. <laughs> I'm Christiane Röhler, and I would like to share with you a God moment from my German heritage. The Advent and Christmas time in Germany is often described by the word besinnlich. 
There is no exact English equivalent to this word. Besinnlich means a time of remembrance, of reflection, and also a time of connection with your senses and emotions. It is a quiet time of gathering with family and friends, enjoying candlelight, Christmas decorations, and Christmas music. And it is a time of waiting and trusting in God. These angels also remind me of a truly moving and inspiring piece of music, the evening prayer or evening blessing in Engelbrecht Humperdinck's opera Hansel and Gretel. You may recall the fairy tale story, which is a story of suffering, human fallibility, resilience, and eventual reconciliation. Hansel and Gretel's family is very poor. When there isn't enough food for all, the children's stepmother agitates to get rid of them. Eventually, their father consents and the children are left behind in the deep forest. We know how the story ends. Hungry and cold, Hansel and Gretel are enticed by a witch and kidnapped. But with cunning and quick wit, they escape. They find their way out of the forest and reunite with their father. In the opera, Hansel and Gretel sing this evening prayer at what should be their moment of deepest despair. Alone, the children have been walking the forest for hours. Night falls. Lost and tired, they bear themselves on the forest floor. At this moment, they pray this prayer, a prayer of unconditional trust in heavenly protection. To my feet are warding. To protect my right side. To protect my left side. To me warmly cover. To above me hover. To to whom it is given. To guide my steps to heaven. Hello Walker Chapel friends and family. My name is Liesl Wright. The Christmas tree has been a Walker Chapel tradition every Christmas since before my family and I were members. It appears in the sanctuary before the first Sunday in Advent and stays up until after the Epiphany. I love to see when families take their Christmas photos in front of the tree after our service. This year I really miss seeing the Christmas tree and maybe you did too. I'd like to share some of the Christmas with you. The Christmas are beautiful, but they are very fragile. They were made many years ago by members of Walker Chapel. Some even have their names on it with the dates. This one was made by Jean Price. This one was made by Helen Wilson. And this one was made by Bob Ward. These three were made in 1973. That's 47 years ago. The Christmas are made of styrofoam, glue, plastic pieces, and foil. Nothing very special, but it took the talent and the time of these men and women to make something beautiful out of something ordinary. And because I actually knew Jean, Helen, and Bob, I remember how they made Walker Chapel the special place that it is. They are still so much a part of the culture of Walker Chapel. I hope that 47 years from now, Walker Chapel members will remember the wonderful things that some of our current members are doing, especially in this time of change. Like how Pastor Lynn and her made the transition from in real person church to live online church. And how every weekend since spring, we have collected food for the food bank manned by our volunteers, like Jean and Bob, Tom and Lucy, Christiana, and countless others. And how Dawn and John have managed to keep us inspired by the beautiful music we get to hear every week, performed by our talented musicians who have had to work together virtually. So many have pitched in to keep the spirit of Walker Chapel alive during the long months of this pandemic. With creativity and prayer, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you.
During the rule of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest, that would be me, assigned to serve in the regiment of Abijah. His name, that would be me, was Zechariah. His wife, that would be me, was descended from the daughters of Aaron. My name was Elizabeth. She is terrific. Together we live honorably before God careful in keeping to the ways of the commandments, and enjoy a clear conscience before God. While this is personal, we were childless because we could never conceive. And now, look at us, we are quite old. It so happened that as I was carrying out my priestly duties before God, it came my one turn in life to enter the sanctuary of God and burn incense. The congregation was gathered and praying outside the temple at the hour of the incense offering. Unannounced, an angel of God appeared before me. I was paralyzed in fear. But the angel reassured me, Don't fear, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Elizabeth, your wife, will bear a son by you. You are to name him John. You're going to leap like a gazelle for joy, and not only you, but many will delight in his birth. He'll achieve great stature with God. He'll drink neither wine nor beer. He'll be filled with the Holy Spirit from the moment he leaves his mother's womb. He will turn many sons and daughters of Israel back to their God. He will herald God's arrival in the style and strength of Elijah, soften the hearts of parents to children, and kindle devout understanding among hardened skeptics. He'll get the people ready for God. I told that angel just like I'm telling you now. Do you expect me to believe this? I'm an old man, and my wife is an old woman. Look at us. The angel said, I am Gabriel, the sentinel of God, sent especially to bring you this glad news. Because you won't believe me, you'll be unable to say a word until the day of your son's birth. Every word I've spoken to you will come true on time, God's time. Well, when he came out and couldn't speak, everyone knew Zach had seen a vision. He was speechless and had to use sign language with the people. When the course of his priestly assignment was complete, we, Zechariah and I, went back home. Sure enough, it wasn't long before we learned that I was pregnant, and Zach was silent until the day John was born. It's true. Nothing, Nothing is, is impossible, impossible with God. God. I'm just so confused. I mean, I'm an OBGYN. I should know these things. 
But I just don't understand how a woman, Elizabeth, a woman well beyond her childbearing years, got pregnant. I guess I have a lot to learn about when a person is visited by the Holy Spirit. Abby, nothing is impossible with God. Who are you and how did you know my name? Hello, my name is Gabriel, the angel, and I have another example of a visit from the Holy Spirit that's going to surprise you. God sent me to the village of Nazareth in Galilee, and there I searched for Mary, a young woman engaged to be married to Joseph, who was a descendant from the lineage of David. When I found Mary, she was scared of me, and she wondered what in the world was about to happen. I can see how she might be a little surprised. Yeah, and I tried my best to calm her down. I said, God has a surprise for you. You too will become pregnant and give birth to a child, and the child's name will be Jesus. Another visit from the Holy Spirit? Of course, because nothing is impossible with God. Bethlehem was long and dusty. I was worried for Mary's safety, but we both prayed mightily, and by God's grace, we finally made it. Soon after we arrived, Mary gave birth to a son, Jesus. I wrapped Jesus in a blanket and laid him in a manger filled with straw because there was no room at the inn. Despite all the challenges leading up to baby Jesus' birth, God took good care of us. And Joseph and I felt the strength of God's presence in the young, oh so strong and precious little curly-headed donkey that carried me. Can you say ee ah? Ee ah. Ee ah. No, no. In truth, I have no idea how he carried me. No, no. Nothing, Nothing is, is impossible, impossible with God. God. Can you say ee ah? Say ee ah. Ee ah. Benny, can you say what does a donkey say? Ee ah. That's right. <laughs> ee ah. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love the Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared. Now my soul feels its worth. From the time I learned I was carrying a child I was filled with joy. I wondered how had I been chosen to carry the Son of God. 
The moment the angel visited me and I came to understand God's mission for me, I was bursting with God news. I'm dancing the song of my Savior God. God took one good look at me and look what happened. I'm the most fortunate woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The God whose very name is holy, set apart from all others. God's mercy flows in wave after wave on those who are in awe of God. God bared God's arm and showed strength, scattered the bluffing laggards. God knocked tyrants off their high horses and pulled victims out of the mud. The starving poor sat down to banquet. The callous rich were left out in the cold. God embraced God's chosen child, and God remembered and piled on the mercies, piled them high. It's exactly what God promised, beginning with Abraham and right up till now. A thrill of hope, my weary heart rejoices, for yonder breaks the new and glorious morn. are growing really cold. Yes, but no snow. And I've never seen the sky so clear. Look at that star shining in the eastern sky. Father, we are missing a sheep again. Have you looked in the gully by the stream? Yes, nothing. I hope it's not the wolf again. Truly, we cannot afford to lose another sheep. Can't be a wolf. Then it would have warned us, right? She's too cozy by the fire to warn us about lost sheep. You girls spoil her. She's just a lazy sheepdog now. Look how bright the sky becomes. It's almost like dawn instead of midnight. Do you hear that? Uh, sounds like singing. I hear it too. It sounds like a whole choir down in the lower field. Well, let's go see what's going on. One minute. Fear not. Fear not. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Fear not. Glad tidings of great joy we bring to you and all humankind. To you in David's town, the Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this shall be his sign. The heavenly babe you there shall find, to human view displayed, all wrapped in swaddling bands of cloth, in a manger laid. Do not be afraid. Glad tidings of great joy we bring to you and all humankind.
It's a miracle. Who could have believed that a host of angels would bless these fields? Did you hear? The angels have called us to Bethlehem. We're going to Bethlehem, right? What about our flock? We can ask the Musser family to shepherd them until we return. Right, we've cared for them many times. I'm sure they'll help us. Could we really travel that far? Yes, we can. I believe we are called to go. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful, oh my family, rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Yes, let's travel to Bethlehem and see for ourselves what God has revealed. How do we find the child? We'll follow that bright star in the heavens. That will lead us to our Savior. I'm sure of it. Bundle up. It's going to be a cold journey. I'm, I'm not, not cold. cold. Bundle, Bundle up. up. Wait, we need a gift to offer the child. I know. I can play my drum for him. Of course. That's perfect. We bring power of a pum pum to lay before the king. Power of a pum pum, rum a pum pum, rum a pum pum. So to honor him, power of a pum pum, when we come. That's a wrap, That's a wrap everybody.
The star has brought us from our kingdoms in the east, but where is the child that we seek? I trust the star will be a faithful guide. Three wise people of Orient are... Bearing gifts we traverse afar. Through fields and past fountains, over moors and across mountains. Following yonder, yonder star. Yes, I am Jacob, the king of camel. I carry all the water. Yeah! I'm the star of wonder. I'm the star of night. I'm the star of royal beauty bright. Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king of David's line, gifts we bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never, over us all to reign. Yes, I am Jacob, the king's camel, I carry all the gifts. I'm the star I'm of wonder. wonder, I'm the star I'm of night. night, I'm the star, I'm the star of, of royal beauty. Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. The child, we are in the right place. The heavenly star has indeed been a faithful guide. King, King forever, forever, ceasing never, over us all to reign. Let's all sing together, this little light of mine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, oh, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine Everywhere I go 
I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine all through the night, all through the night. I'm gonna let it shine all through the night. I'm gonna let it shine all through the night. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Y'all sound pretty good. We're gonna do it one more time. I wanna hear you sing as loud as you can. And I want you to sound so loud that we can hear you. All the way from through the computer. <laughs> Alright, this little lot of mine. Sing it loud, sing it proud, y'all. This little lot of mine, come on, I'm gonna let it shine. This little lot of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine, yeah, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, this little light, hey, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, oh glory, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, yeah, I'm gonna let it shine, 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 let it shine. Merry Christmas, y'all. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, oh, I'm gonna let it shine, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, everywhere I go. Wow, wonderful, and what a great reminder that we are all invited to receive the light and nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible with God. From our house to your house, know that we adore and love you so very much and look forward to seeing you on the Zoom on Christmas Eve. Amen.